Now, number six, a company has $10,000 today and needs to have $40,000. If they have a 10% investment opportunity, how many years will it take to reach their goal? Well, in this case, this is kind of an odd problem because in a case like this, I have both the present amount and the future amount. They have 10,000 today, they need to have 40,000 in the future. And I know the percentage. What I don't know is the number of years. Well, that makes this a, a rather odd problem because normally I'm given the number of years. So this one's going to be a tough one. I'm going to have to solve this one in a different way. And actually, I could solve this one two different ways. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to solve this two different ways, and in each way I'll get the same answer. So basically, I have 10,000 and 40,000. So what I could do is one of two things. I could say 10,000 divided by 40,000 and get that number, or I could do the opposite and say 40,000 divided by 10,000. So you see how I did that? I just took the two numbers I was given and divided those. I got an answer of 0.25, I got an answer of 4. What does that answer mean? Well, it depends on how I use that answer. In that example, it says 10%. That's the percent. I don't know the number of periods. So what I could do is this answer of 0.25. I'm going to look at the present value of one table. So here's the present value of one table. Now I'm going to look for 10% because that's the rate that they gave me, 10%. The answer I had was 0.25. I want to find the closest thing to 0.25. Now when I go down through here, where do I see 0.25? I don't see exactly 0.25 but I can come pretty close to it. When I come down here to the 14th row, I see 0.26, and then if I go down one more, I see 0.23, so somewhere in between 14 and 15. So if it's somewhere in between 14 and 15, I would say that that's roughly 14 and a half years. Now I could also solve this another way. Look at that number four. What if I go to the future value table? on the future value table. Again, 10%, the 10% column. I want to find the closest thing to 4. Well, if I go here to the 14th line, I get 3.79. If I go to the 15th line, 4.1. So somewhere in between 14 and 15, which would be about 14 and a half. So you see, either way, the answer to that is 14 and a half years. So that's the way to solve that problem. And that's one of the trickiest ones because they left out an important piece of information. That's what made that one so difficult. And then number seven, we're going to work on that one. Let me minimize my tables here. So situation seven. We've got a company that has $15,000 to invest. They need to have accumulated at least 30000 and they need this in 10 years. So how high must the interest rate be in order to achieve the goal? Well, this one is similar to the previous one. I've got the present amount, 15000 I've got the future amount, 30000 I know the 10 years. I don't know the interest rate, which normally would be given to me. So again, I could solve this two different ways. I could say 15,000 divided by 30,000, or I could say 30,000 divided by 15,000. I either get 0.5 or 2. Now this time I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to look at my time value tables, but this time I'm looking at a certain number of years, which in this case would be 10 years. And I'm going to look for the closest interest rate. So we'll be anxious to see how that uh, pans out for us. So on my tables, on the present value table, I actually need present value of one. 
So I'll have to go back and open my tables. I closed them out. Present value of 1. I'm going to look down here at 10, and I want to find the closest thing to 0.5. Now, already these numbers are too low. So let me go up here and look at 10. Looking for the closest thing to 0.5. Here's the 10th line. Now, when I get to the 7% column, I see 0.50. That's about as close as I can get to 5, 0.5. So that insinuates that the answer is 7%. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down, 7%. But I could also do this using future value. So let's try this on the future value table. Right here is the future value of 1. Again, the line 10... I want the closest thing this time to the number 2. And when I get to the 7% column, 1.9. That's pretty close to number 2. So again, that insinuates 7%. So whether I use 0.5, which is the present value, or 2, which is the future value, either way, it insinuates that it would take a 7% return. So these last two problems were pretty tricky because they left out an important piece of information. So that completes this example on the time value of money. And this was a pretty good example because it gave us a good mixture of everything. We had present value, future value, lump sums, annuities. We even had some that were tricky that left out information. But the idea is as long as you know your tables, you should be able to handle any time value problem that you have.